just like a tractor can get busy with a field much better than we can. The same thing is happening now with our intelligence. Many of us think that we are spontaneous and adaptable, but the truth is our brains love stability. Our brains love an addiction to certainty. And also the very system that we have been educated in all the way back from the industrial revolution has created this addiction to certainty. The future is much more about an emotional intelligence than it is a IQ intelligence. It's a different type of intelligence that we need to start engaging with. I'm gonna be doing a very quick talk around the ability to see beyond tomorrow. And this is really what we all need to be doing no matter where we are in the world is preparation for the future. But in order for us to do that, let's understand exactly what's going on in the world at large. And what we see right now is this incredible transformation that we are going through. And if I had more time with you, I'd explain to you that we have about eight different cycles all ending at pretty much the same time. That's why there's so much chaos in the world and that's why there's so much change in the world. But all transformations, no matter how small or how large, always have three phases. And the first phase is always sadness because it's sad to leave the shore of familiarity. It's sad to leave our comfort zones and sometimes it's sad to leave our identities that we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and decades creating. And when we leave the shore of familiarity, we have to now arrive at the strange world, which is kind of what we are beginning to experience now as we start to move into this new strange world. But the problem is, is that if we don't process our sadness, it shows up as anger. It was Dr. Caroline Leaf who said it best. She said, I sat with my anger long enough until she told me her name was grief. And so we have a world today that hasn't processed sadness, that is arriving at a strange new world, not excited, not fascinated, and not curious about it, but usually quite fearful of it. And so the future is much more about an emotional intelligence than it is a IQ intelligence. It's a different type of intelligence that we need to start engaging with. And we all know that the process of moving through this transformation is an emotional one. We have to go through the processes of denial and anxiety and anger and frustration for us to get through the transition, for us to move into the process of creativity and hope and energy. But the direct way of getting there is not an option. And we have to go through the emotional phase of the process of letting go to be able to pick up on this new world around us. And in the next few years, we will again pick up to the third phase of a transformation, which is adventure, where we will again get wind in our sails, we'll understand who we are, we'll understand the world ahead of us. But in this phase right now, we are squarely between sad and strange. And we need to become okay with that because there is a lot of change ahead of us. But also let's remember that schooling, organizational structures, um, universities, all of these things have been sort of set up based on stability. In fact, maybe even an addiction to certainty. And many of us think that we are spontaneous and adaptable, but the truth is our brains love stability. Our brains love an addiction to certainty. And also the very system that we have been educated in all the way back from the industrial revolution has created this addiction to certainty. But we all know the future is about exactly the opposite. It's not about certainty, but it's about adaptability. And we have to understand what it means to be truly adaptable. You know, neuroscience is now sharing stats around the fact that we have between 60 and 70,000 thoughts a day, of which 90% are the same thoughts as yesterday. Meaning that the brain and the way the brain works is much more about stability than it is about adaptability. And so we almost have to rewire our brains to understand how to deal with this much uncertainty. And this addiction to certainty has actually created something Thing called fragile optimism around the world. And what fragile optimism means is when things work out like I want them to, I'll be optimistic. 
And if they don't work out like I want them to, I'm going to sulk and be angry and be upset and be fragile in my optimism, which means that I'm not actually being adaptable. I'm being very addicted to certainty. And what we need to be developing is agile optimism, which means we are optimistic in our behavior, not based on an outcome, but just based on a behavior, which is very different to the way our brains actually work right now. And if we dive a little bit deeper, we'll see that fragile optimism is hooked into an insistence in the way things should be. And the way we need to be thinking about this is a persistence in our behavior towards whatever is ahead of us. And there's two quotes I want us to sit with and think about for a bit. And the first one comes from Albert Einstein. He says, no problem can be solved from the, solved from the same awareness that created it. And so we have to ask ourselves, are we changing awareness? Do we know what awareness is? How quickly are we able to evolve it and elevate it so we can start to see solutions ahead of us that were otherwise not available? And so the question we need to ask ourselves is, what is my awareness? How do I go about changing it? And the second quote also helps us understand this process a little bit better from Alvin Toffler. He says, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be the ones who cannot read and cannot write, but the ones who cannot unlearn to relearn. And so we have to think about the brain in terms of a hardware computer, where we take neurons that have been wiring and firing together for decades, and to loosen them up and to relax them so that we can start to change our awareness to start to see new solutions ahead of us. But let's understand what the skill of the future really is. And in order to do that, we need to go back a few thousand years. And we need to go back to the agricultural era and understand that in the agricultural era, for 10,000 years, for almost 500 generations, the rules that we followed were pretty much the same. And the rules were quite simple. Follow your forefathers because they knew exactly what to do when it came to agriculture. You needed to understand the seasons because it was important to know when you were going to sow and reap and harvest. And then finally, if you were strong enough to work 16 hours a day in the fields, then you'd become successful. These were very simple rules that we had to follow, and we did so for thousands of years. And the most important thing that we had in the ag agricultural era was our physicality, our PQ. And it was this PQ that for 10,000 years made us become successful. And now what is starting to happen is that we're starting to see the rules change just like they did when we went from the agricultural era to the industrial era. And when the industrial era arrived around 200 years ago, the rules moved from follow your forefathers to follow the system. And the system is our educational system, our organizational systems, our university systems. These are the systems that we have been prized to follow for the last 200 years. And the better you follow the system, the more successful you'd become. And also what you had to do was not develop your understanding of seasons, but develop your knowledge of analytical thinking, of the addiction to certainty, of logical thinking. And if you were more logical and more analytical, the more successful you'd become. And you weren't working the fields anymore, but now what you needed to do is become a greater expert in your existing field. So if you became an accountant after school, you'd become a better and better accountant throughout the rest of your career. You wouldn't jump sectors, wouldn't jump jobs that would look terrible on your CV in many ways. And so we realized we went from PQ, physicality, to IQ, which is intelligence quotient. And for the last 200 years, what we've done is we've celebrated this incredible IQ that our brains have been programmed into for the last 200 years. But here we are, where everything is changing again, and the rules are now shifting. And this is really what's creating a lot of chaos in the world, is that we're moving from agriculture to industrial to now this AI converging technology fueled future, which I call the quantum era as we start moving into it. And we realize that we've moved from follow your forefathers to follow the system to now follow your uniqueness. You see, intelligence is becoming commoditized. Algorithmic thinking is what computers can do really, really well. And it's what universities have taught us for the last 200 years is algorithmic thinking. That's what analytical thinking is. And computers can do them better, cheaper, faster, just like a tractor can get busy with a field much better than we can. The same thing is happening now with our intelligence. And so our uniqueness becomes our currency of the future as we start to see the commoditization of intelligence all around us. Also, it's not about doing one job over and over. It's not about 
increasing your skill sets at accountants. It's about being dynamic and adaptable because everything is changing all the time. It's not about doing one thing. It's almost about doing many things all at once. And our brains need to be rewired for this in many ways. And ultimately, it's not about this constantly focusing on improving yourself in one way. It's really about the ability to unlearn, change your awareness, and be able to deal with agile skills in complex situations. Again, this is a very different skill set that we haven't really been taught. And so we realize that we've gone from PQ, physical quotient, IQ, intelligence quotient, and now we're moving into a creative generalist type of space. And this is, again, not something that we've been taught, but being creative in many different ways, meaning that our brains need to be totally adaptable to the process, meaning that the skill of the future is not about what we know, but about how we engage with the world ahead of us. That's why the future is about adaptability. It's not about building an IQ. It's about building a machine in our brains that's able to unlearn and relearn and unlearn and relearn on a continuous basis, which makes our brain a very flexible machine rather than a machine that's in repetition mode as it's always been for the last 200 years. And so we realize that AQ really requires us to have high levels of EQ. And EQ has so many different permutations and so many different meanings. But the best meaning that I found about a EQ was this question that you need to ask yourself is what is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is how quickly can you recover from a trigger? This is an emotional future that we're moving into. It's not an intelligent future. It's not a cleverer future. It's not a smarter future. It's a wiser future. Because in order to be adaptable, we can't be triggered into the past. And every time you get triggered, you're not adaptable. You're stuck in who you were. And if you think about Donald Trump, for example, he's triggered into the past. He's not thinking about the future. In fact, his payoff line for his presidency is, let's make America great again, meaning I want to go back. I don't want to go forward. And so the future is about this emotional ability to not be triggered so that you are being adaptable in a way of engaging with the future in an excited, fascinating, and curious way, rather than a space that is fearful, anxious, and frustrated at so much change ahead of us. But let's remember very quickly that if you are triggered for one to five days, you're just in a bad mood. And if you're triggered for six to 10 days, you just have a bad temperament. But if you triggered for longer than two weeks, welcome to your new personality. And now all of a sudden, you're always angry. You're always upset. You're always sad. You're always anxious. And people say, I suffer from anxiousness. Well, no, you don't. You just got into a trigger that you couldn't get out of. And so we have to realize that as we start to move into this future, and as I start to hand over to Richard, my good friend, who's going to take you onto the keynote journey, we have to realize that this is not a time to be seeking comfort. This is a time to be seeking discomfort. This is a time for us to think about our brains in brand new ways, for us to become adaptable, not focused on intelligence, but focused on the ability to unlearn and relearn as quickly as possible. I'm so happy to be here with you, and I'm so sorry I'm not here with you in real life, but my name is John. Please find me online. We'd be happy to chat with you, but I'm open here for a Q&A. So please, over to you. Thank you, Thank you very much, John. Thank you. I've, uh, I've picked uh, one question that was submitted uh, by somebody in the audience because we have an online forum. And I think is a, it's a very good question and it will be the only question I will have for you. So, the question is the following. Since this morning, uh, from all the presentations, we, are, we, we have been hearing increasingly complex trends quantum computing, uh, int artificial intelligence explosion, behavioral uh, changes in our uh, way of uh, working, living, and so on and so forth. How can we keep up with those trends if this is not our job, as in your case? <laughs> um, so, mega trends to follow and uh, maybe a uh, very practical advice on how much we must invest in uh, educating ourselves and how to do that. Because it seems like it's a full-time job. We need to compete with the exponential growth of everything around us. And uh, people are uh, 
uh, feeling overwhelmed? Please. Yeah, a excellent question. Uh, firstly, let me tell you, I do not stay on top of all the trends. I mean, I have some trends, but there was just far too much for anybody to try and keep okay. up with. I mean, I saw a stat the other day that said there's 2,000 AI tools launched every day. And that's even before AI starts writing AI, which means that that number will go to 20,000 and 40,000 soon. What we have to realize is the first thing we have to realize is that we can't compete IQ to IQ. So we can't compete on that level. So we shouldn't start to try. What we should be doing is accessing our human potential, our genius, our passion, our curiosity, who we are as an individual. That's really, really important in a world where we've been prized to follow the system to be fitting in. The future requires us to do exactly the opposite, which is fit out of the system to become totally unique in the way that you engage with the world. Now, this is very important because baked into your uniqueness is adaptability. And in that uniqueness comes your very specific curiosity. Now, what I would suggest is that you follow your curiosity into the trends, because those are the ones that are relevant to you. Those are the ones that will make you come alive. And I must tell you, I imagine Richard or anybody in the audience has a totally different curiosity to me. And so the way I look at trends is based on my curiosity of neuroscience, business strategy, and trends. Other people will have a curiosity into blockchain and a curiosity into crypto or into gaming or into AI or whatever the case may be. So it's not about knowing all the trends. It's about becoming confident in your uniqueness, taking that uniqueness and using that curiosity to become adaptable into the trends that you love, that make you totally unique, which makes your currency the unique currency, which means that you'll add value in a world in a totally different way. So don't worry about all the trends because I don't, I can't keep up with them. I only follow the trends that I'm passionate about and I'm curious about. So step one, become curious, find your passion, follow those trends and you become unique in the currency and that becomes your success formula. And also fight with uh, your, our addiction uh, to certainty. Certainty, that's <laughs> right, of course. But, but understand that when you become curious and when you become totally focused on who you are, your addiction to certainty goes. Because remember, the certainty was based on a system. But if you're not following the system, you don't need to be certain about too much. You know, I'm not totally certain about my future, but I'm just moving through the process of adapting, unlearning, letting go of certainty in some ways, and then moving forward. And it's a flow state that we need to be engaging with rather than an anxious, addicted to certainty state. But following your genius does that anyway. It's baked into the system. Ladies and gentlemen, James Amain, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank Have you. Have a great conference. Bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye bye.